Okay, so tonight is gonna be lessons learned uh, from Super Saturday. Uh, the way Super Saturday worked, for those of you who didn't get to attend, it was in uh, different cities throughout the country. And while the presentation was the same and the PowerPoint, which um, I have, but it was too big to download from Dropbox because of all the videos in it. Um, so I'll share that on the team page once we can get it condensed. Each speaker brought something of their own to the table. And so at ours, we had Suzanne Clinton, who's a diamond, and we had B.B. Schottig, who is an emerald, and she's a retired nurse. She's kind of the product guru. So I want to share not only kind of the main presentation and what we talked about, but also I want to share um, some of their little personal tidbits. And I did do a presentation myself, but the first thing that we talked about at Super Saturday are the new success kits. And they are amazing so these take the place of the welcome packs starting on Monday the 18th every ambassador who joins they get these new success kits and this is what it looks like one cool little tidbit the people who design the Apple product packaging actually help design this um, so you'll notice that as you go everything in it like this is supposed to be slim spilled slim that says plexus it actually you can feel the texture it's got a packet of slim here it's got some of the vitamins on the back um, but this is the new kit that everybody gets and it says your journey uh, begins and you ask yourself and then when they open it it says what if this could change everything that's actually trademarked now by the company and then when they open this success kit it's going to have in it many, many items. I'm just going to briefly go through these. But here's what it looks like. It has a table of contents for everything that's in it. And then they have some amazing things. One, everybody gets this Plexus bracelet. You can see it's a stainless steel bracelet. It says Plexus Worldwide. They get um, some thank you cards uh, and thank you postcards that they can use. The great thing, though, is two things. The Let's Get You Started Guide. This has everything an ambassador needs to know. Even for the wholesale ambassadors who are adamant they're not going to work the business, I love this because it might get them interested a little bit. You know, I was one of those wholesalers that said, no way, I'm not working the business. Um, and so I eventually decided, yes, I'm going to, but I think this would have helped me realize what an amazing company it is a little sooner. So I'm not going to go through all of this success kit. There's also um, a quick get start guide, quick start guide, and it's just 10 steps for starting strong. And these are the things that you want your ambassadors to do and we're sharing with them. But the great thing is now they're seeing it from the company as well. So maybe if you don't get your email out to them right away, or um, if maybe you know duplication isn't happening on your team, they're getting this. The other thing is the guide to the compensation plan. And I don't know about you guys, but it took me a solid two or three months to understand and really wrap my mind around the compensation plan. And so this is really good the way it lays out all 11 ways that we get paid. It's very easy um, to know and to learn. The other thing I love about this and the success guide all of the pictures of the people in it are actual ambassadors. They're not models. So like here on the back of this is Sarah Marble um, and Sonia Dudley. So I just like that it has real people in it with their families and their kids and everything. Um, so this is about what if this could change everything. You get um, five of these in the success kit to share with people. One of the great new things are these product cards. And so these are a very great useful guide for everybody. It talks about, on the front, it talks about the product and all of the stuff about it. But then on the back, there's also talking points and things you might say to people about the product and how it can help them. And so there's one of these for every product um, that we sell, including the breast check kit. And so that, I think, is a really, really good resource. The great news is, starting in February, anybody can buy these, any ambassador. You can buy them for $16.99. And so I would recommend that if you were not at Super Saturday, to get one of these um, and to have it for the resources. I don't know yet. I'm assuming eventually some of those individual pieces will be available in the back office. Like you could buy them in bulk. Um, 
but you definitely want to get them when they're available here in February for $16.99. The other thing that they showed at Super Saturday was the product video. I actually just post, uh, posted it today on the team page, and it is um, um, a very, very good video to share with potentials um, and even new ambassadors. It's even something you could include in your email. It's just a link to YouTube. They showed that. They also showed a new opportunity video, which is on YouTube, just about the business side of Plexus. And then they showed a compensation video, which I have to admit, um, they showed it at our Friday night opportunity meeting. I thought that was a little much to show a potential, but there is a compensation video out there where they have um, different ambassadors talking through the different um, ways we get paid. Uh, so I'll post all of those on the team page as well. Now I want to share my screen and get into the other lessons learned from Super Saturday. Let me do a slideshow here. There's the new success kits. So one thing they talked about a lot is the importance of your why. And I know many of you have heard us talk about this, but this is kind of the heart and soul of your Plexus business. You have to know your why. Why are you doing this? Because this is going to fuel not only your motivation but and your success, but when you get um, discouraged when you get overwhelmed, when you um, have one of those days where maybe everyone's told you no and you're feeling pretty bad, your why is what's going to keep you going and get you out of the trenches. So, and your why can change and everybody's why is different, but I encourage everybody to write it down. What is your why? What is your team's why? Do you know the why of people on your team? Um, why do you want it? You know, what does success look like for you? How can it help you grow and how can it help your family? You know, my why started off by just getting healthy. And then my why started off on maybe um, I could actually turn this into an income to where I could stay at home with my baby. And now my why is even bigger. You know, I want to be able to retire my husband. I want to pay for private school for Adelaide. Um, I would love for her to go to college without any debt. Um, and so my why, you know, just gets bigger, um, but it has to be kind of the center of, of, of your business and knowing your why. Um, and so that's just something you don't have to share it. I know a lot of teams encourage people to share their whys, but your why is actually something um, that should make you get emotional about it, um, why, why you're doing this. They talked a lot about goal setting. We've done a whole training on goal setting, but you know, it really is good to not only have goals in your Plexus business, but also we're going to talk about actions to make those goals a reality. The first thing is, I think they talked about Super Saturday across all of them, is that anybody can do this. That's one thing I love about Plexus. The very first Plexus event I went to, well, I went to an opportunity meeting. That's what made me want to work the business. But convention was the first Plexus event I went to last year. I hadn't been working the business very long. And what I loved about it is everybody who is successful and everybody who's involved in Plexus comes from all different walks of life. You don't just have kind of the cookie cutter personality or person who's at the top of the company. Um, everybody, you have stay-at-home moms who homeschool with 11 kids that are diamond ambassadors. You have retired nurses. You have men. You have women, young, old. And so that's what I love about it. And I think that was kind of the theme that they started off Super Saturday is that if you can imagine yourself where you want to be, that's the first step of getting there. Um, and really thinking it through. I'll tell you the most important thing about this business is that you are consistent and you treat it, you know, like a business. So visualize that. Where do you want to be a year from now? Do you want to be at the top of the company? It takes the average, um, it, the, the amount of time it takes someone to reach Emerald in the company, which is the first jewel level, the average is 12 months. To reach Diamond, the average is between 18 and 24 months. So, I mean, two years to be making over $400,000 and have all of that you know, freedom of time and freedom from debt and all that the diamonds have, that is not a long time to sacrifice, I don't think, um, two years to make that happen. So visualize that. How many hours are you going to dedicate to Plexus? The great thing they all talked about 
um, is that they fit it into their nooks and crannies of their life. But when you fit it into those nooks and crannies, you have to, you know, be committed and work it and not just work it every other day, every other week, every couple of months. Um, we're fortunate in that our products work. And at our Super Saturday, um, the thing they kept saying, and I just loved it, and I don't mean to offend everybody, anybody, but they kept saying this is not candles and nail polish we're dealing with, which those things are great, but this is life change. These are life-changing products and a life-changing opportunity, business opportunity. Um, and so how, you know, how will you dedicate yourself kind of to making that happen for you? Because the great thing is our products are life-changing and they pretty much sell themselves uh, once you can get people to try them. But if people don't know or people aren't hearing it from you, they're going to go to somebody else or maybe they're never going to know about it. So there is some work you have to put into it. You know, they talked a lot about everyone's journey is different and everybody's pace is different. And I absolutely agree. Do not compare your journey to somebody else's. Um, you know, just because somebody got to diamond in six months, uh, which has actually happened in the company, somebody got to diamond in six months does not mean that if it takes you four years to become diamond, that you're doing something wrong um, or that it's not worth it. However, one thing I wanted to add though is that even though everybody's pace and journey is different, don't use that as an excuse to not be consistent and not be purposeful in your business. And so one thing that is really gonna help you in your business, once you have your goal, I like to break it down into manageable chunks, and they talked about that a lot. You know, um, looking at the activities, you wanna focus on what we call IPAs, or income producing activity. And I got kind of caught up in this um, when I first started too, and that I've built a lot of my business on social media, particularly Facebook. But if I only had 30 minutes a day to work Plexus, because I was working full time, when I would log into Facebook, I would get sucked into Facebook. I called it the face suck. Next thing I know, an hour and a half's gone by, and I've done nothing for my business. And so they talked a lot about that, that even if you only have 15 minutes a day to be very focused on what you're doing and use that time um, on income producing activities. Those are things such as reaching out to potentials, following up with customers, following up with your team, making a post, calling people on the phone. And then they talked a lot about the power of 15 minutes. Everybody, I don't care how busy you are, you can find 15 minutes a day, whether you're in the car commuting or you're at the drive through um, getting a coffee or getting a lunch. Um, or you're in the school parking lot waiting on pickup. And so they said, you know, if you can use those 15 minutes um, to make three phone calls, and in this day and age, when we say phone calls, I know a lot of people don't do the phone anymore. I think phone calls are great, but just, you know, nowadays it seems a lot of people are more onto like texting or messaging. Um, so when I say call, it can also be a chat with somebody. But if you can do that three times a day, so if you can find three 15 minute chunks of time, and then if you can make three calls during that time, that adds up to 270 people a month that you're touching or reaching out to about Plexus. And that's only with 15 minutes. So I thought that was a huge number. They talked a lot about your Frank list. You've heard us talk about probably your list of 40, your list of 100, whatever you wanna call it. This is so, so important, your Frank list. How many people can you get on this list? So you wanna look at your friends, your relatives, your acquaintances, people from your neighborhood, uh, people from your kids' connections, so soccer, dance, school, Sunday school, church, service organizations. What you're doing with this list, it does not mean you're reaching out and contacting all of these people but you are writing their names down. How many people can you get on your list? If they're an enemy, add them on your list. You hate them, they don't care for you so much, add them on your list. In fact, they probably need Plexus more than you realize. <laughs> um, but don't pre-qualify people on your list. Don't think, oh, they're already healthy, they're already in shape, they couldn't afford it, they wouldn't be interested, they think network marketing is crazy. Do not pre-qualify people. 
because that's how you end up, um, you know, not getting those people on your team who might be fantastic or who really need the products because we're making those assumptions. Um, and I know it's easy to do. The other thing when you're thinking about your Frank list, you want to think about who do you know maybe that's outgoing? Who do you know that cares about their health and is really into health and fitness? Who do you know that maybe has a lot of friends or a big network? And you're just going to write all of these names down. This is kind of the lifeline to your business because you're going to refer back to this list. You're going to pick maybe the top two or three people from this list and you're going to reach out to them. You're going to highlight people on this list that you uh, consider your dream team. Who on that list would you love to have on your team to work the business with you? And then you're going to have your chicken list, the people that you would love to have on your team but you're too chicken to reach out to. And eventually you're going to work up the courage and you're going to look at that list and you're going to reach out to those people. They shared a lot of stories um, about people either who were on their list and they knew the people really needed Plexus, but they were too chicken to reach out to them. And then they find out later that that person has ordered or joined from somebody else who wasn't afraid um, to share the products. And so that was a big thing about your Frank list. And it's something that's organic. Um, you either should keep it in a notebook or put it on the wall, wherever you're going to see it. And you're constantly adding and removing uh, people to that list and updating it. And I'll tell you, just the, um, just the process of coming up with that list, it's going to jog your thinking on different ways and different ideas on how to reach out to those people. So along those lines of income producing activity, they talked a lot about DMO. What is your daily method of operation? And I'll tell you, this is something I am still struggling with. Um, but if you're still working full time and you know you really have limited time to work Plexus, this is even more important for you. Because you gotta be consistent in your daily and weekly activities. And if you're consistent, if you're doing these things every single day, it's going to rock your business, I promise you. But you got to find the time. you got to figure out what that is. It's different for everybody. Um, so the two that they shared from BB and Suzanne, Suzanne does a perfect 10-week. She does a 3, 3, 3, and 1. So she shares the products with three people. Doesn't necessarily have to be brand new people. Um, but she might have a customer who's on Triplex who doesn't know about a new product, so she'll, she considers that a share. She shares the business opportunity with three people. She trains three of her team members. This could be a Zoom call, it could be a three-way chat, it could be a call with a potential. And then she participates in one event, whether that's an opportunity meeting, um, you know, in her neighborhood, an online opportunity meeting, a PJ party on Facebook, maybe even just going over to a friend's house and talking about Plexus to them. But that's what she tries to do every single week. Now, BB, she has a little bit um, different approach. She does the three, two, one, and she said she does this every day. But BB also, while she sets her expectations on her business every day, she also sets limits. She will not let herself work more than four hours a day on Plexus. Now, granted, you know, she's retired now, so Plexus is her full-time job. And I realize some of you guys aren't there yet, and you don't have four hours a day. But she sets limits. Um, and this is something I've had to do myself because, you know, it got to the point where my daughter was like, Mommy, put your phone down. It's very easy, especially in the beginning when you have a lot of, potentials and you're trying to follow up, you feel like you're always on your phone because somebody's always messaging you. So it's okay to set those boundaries. Um, and you know, because the great thing about Plexus is that it provides us with the freedom we want to be with our family and our friends. So we can't lose sight of that. Um, and so what BB does, she shares Plexus with three people every day. That could be potentials or follow up or new products to people. She trains two of her team members, and again, she said that can be a three-way call, that can be a Zoom for the whole team, and then she connects with one person and does not mention Plexus, and I like this. She builds every day, she focuses on building a relationship with one person outside of Plexus. 
So she mentioned sometimes she'll log in on Facebook and spend 20 minutes to wish everybody a happy birthday that day. Or, you know, she'll spend 20 minutes to look at some friends' pictures that they've posted on Instagram and make sure to send them a message like, hey, I saw your kid's birthday party or, you know, or if she's um, not seen somebody for coffee, she'll want to meet him for coffee. But just building those relationships outside of Plexus. The other thing I just, I loved um, that they talked about is customer care not customer service. This is really what sets us apart and why people would want to purchase Plexus, um, especially from an ambassador, because we're providing them an experience with our customers and our ambassadors. We talk about this a lot in the beginning on how you want to make those personal recommendations for their products, you know, because anybody can go online to the website and order the products. But if you can create an experience for them on where you're helping them with the personal product recommendation, you're helping them through die-off, maybe you're even making recommendations for other products they might want to try, make it an experience. Um, and the other thing you always want to do, and this, is, this came from BB, um, she said always ask for referrals. This is good. Um, it's not something you know, I've done a lot of. But you should always ask your customers who are currently on the products to give you referrals of anybody they might know that would be interested in Plexus or Plexus could benefit them. And you know, ask for that, ask for the phone number or the email and don't be afraid to reach out to those people and say like, hi, you know, this is Amy, you know, Suzanne gave me your phone number and wanted me to share more information about Plexus with you. Would that be okay? They talk they talked a lot about how the average person's network is 425 people. That's kind of the average network of the average person. So if they only give you a referral on 1% of the people they know, that's five people that you're adding or that you're reaching out to that you did not know. And that's another way that you're able to expand your network. I know we talk a lot about how can I expand my network without just kind of stopping strangers on the street. And referrals is a good way to do that. Um, she also talked a lot about you can even if you wanted to do referral programs for your customers and this is up to you on how you run your business but Suzanne if she gets a referral from a customer um, and then that person orders or joins then she gives them like a free bottle of X Factor or um, some sort of um, product credit and so that's a good kind of neat thing to do if you wanted to do a like an actual customer kind of referral program but the other thing I don't want you guys to um, forget about or not think of is referrals from people who tell you no. You know, people might tell you no. Well, people will tell you no. What I meant to say is people, when they tell you no, it doesn't mean no forever, and it doesn't mean they hate the products. It might just not be the right time for them. And so it's okay to ask them for referrals too, that if they know of anybody else who maybe would be interested or it is the right time for Plexus, to ask them to. They talked a lot about follow-up. I know that's something you hear us say all the time. What does it mean? What does it look like? Follow-up comes in many different forms. It comes in following up with your potentials, um, following up with your current customers, following up with your ambassadors, both your wholesalers and the people who are working the business. You can't be afraid to follow up, but there is a fine line over being persistent versus pushy. Um, and you know, that's just different for every individual. There is no um, silver bullet to follow up on when to do it and how to do it. You really have to feel out the individual person. And you know, some people you can maybe push a little further. Some people you could follow up with every day to check in how they're doing and they would love that. Other people don't want to be bothered. So you kind of have to get that feel. But don't be afraid of following up. It, you know, and you can always use new products, new specials, anything like that as a follow-up. Um, if you can't, you know, think of what to say. Sometimes I'll even just be like, oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned, but we have a 60-day return for customers. Something like that. And then the other thing is, follow-up doesn't even have to be about Plexus. You can follow up just on the person, um, just to check in, and, it, and don't even mention Plexus. I mean, 
if people know you're a Plexus ambassador, you don't always have to talk about Plexus for them to be thinking about it. BB told the story though, um, a couple follow-up stories. So the first one was somebody who she reached out to about the business and the person was a network marketing hater. She was mean about it. She made fun of them. She laughed at them. She didn't want anything to do with it. But BB still followed up. 18 months later, that person joined her team and she's now one of her rock stars. Um, she also told the story though of somebody she followed up with several times and the person kept telling her no. So BB crossed that person off of her list and never followed up with her again. Several months later, when BB's running her report, she sees this person has joined her team as a level six. And so she reaches out to her and says, hey, you know, I'm glad you finally decided to do Plexus. What changed your mind? And the person said, oh my gosh, BB, I'm so sorry. I know I, you know, you, you um, wanted me to try it all those months, but I was afraid to reach out to you when I finally decided it was something I wanted to try. And so that was a hard lesson for BB to learn too, because this person, granted she's on her team, she's a rock star, um, but she could have joined under her instead of her level six. I had a story just happen to me just this week um, in terms of follow-up. Back in March when I just decided to work the business, um, barely didn't know a whole lot about it at all, but I knew the company was good and I knew there was something there. I saw a girl I went to high school with post on Facebook how she wanted to know if there was actually anything legit where you could work from home and make good money. So I sent her a private message and I said, I think I have found it. Would you like to do it with me? I said, I think this is really where it's at. And she, of course, blew me off. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> like, uh, no, you're crazy. So she blew me off. A month later, she decided, you know what? I'll try the products. She was really into fitness, really into working out. So she tried them. She tried Boost against my advice, and she hated it. And she said, forget it. I am never doing Flexus again. This stuff is terrible. Okay. So that was in April. I did not follow up with her at all until December. And we're friends on Facebook, so she saw my post. In December, I sent a message to all of my people who started maybe an early on and fell off and quit. And I kind of fell on my sword and said, hey, you know, I've learned so much um, and I know these products work. I'd love for you to give it another try. She reached back out to me and said, you know what? I've been thinking about it. And yes, I do want to give it another try. She's been on the triplex since December and has had such success. She called me yesterday and she wants to work the business with the hopes of being able to quit her job. So, you know, if that's somebody I had just written off my list because she told me no twice and then told me she hated the products, um, she may not have ever come back. Uh, so don't ever cross people off your follow-up list. They talked a lot too about social media success. And this is something that I am pretty passionate about because the power of social media is huge. You do not have to use social media to work your business. There are plenty of people who are successful who do not have Facebook. But in, you know, in today's day and age, it is a huge tool um, if you use it correctly. There's some strategy behind it. One thing Suzanne said that I love, you gotta hide your crazy, right? You can't put your crazy out on Facebook and then expect people to wanna to buy a product from you. You are Plexus to your network. The minute you start posting about Plexus on your personal page, that for better or worse becomes your business page. So you gotta hide your crazy, you gotta hide your negativity, you can't be complaining on Facebook you know, five days a week about your boss, and then expect somebody to want to join your team because you know you're kind of negative right so positivity breeds positivity they talked about that a lot um, they talked about uh, people are always watching you and this is why being consistent with your posts is so important people are always watching they're not gonna like and they're not gonna comment but they're watching you they're watching you to see if it's legit they're watching you to see if it actually relates to them or is even something that they should be interested in. And they're watching you to see if you're actually gonna stick with it. And so for those reasons, you wanna make sure you're posting every day. I say, and they said it too, no more than twice a day about Plexus. And then you gotta have some personal posts in there too, because you don't wanna just be that crazy Plexus person. 
but you also want to post different success stories so people understand how the products can benefit them. The things you're doing with your Plexus posts is you're sharing a conversation. You want to be building their belief in those products. And so for me, you know, my personal Plexus story is one of an autoimmune disease because I was hypothyroid. My husband had cholesterol and gout and some back pain, and then I lost a little bit of weight. That's all I can share from my personal story. But I know there are tons of people in my network who have migraines, who have fibromyalgia, who have MS. Um, and so if I'm not sharing those types of stories or those types of articles on how Plexus can help, they're never going to know. So I'd encourage you, you know, if, if you kind of feel like you're in a posting rut or you don't know what to post, go through your newsfeed. Look and see how you're doing. See if you need to change it up a bit. Add, you know, add another a story about pain or add a weight loss story or just kind of mix it up a bit. One thing Suzanne said that I really liked, you know, we say all the time, don't be salesy. And sometimes it's, well, what does that mean? Because we've all done it. I've done it. The stuff that says join my team. It's hard not to because you're so excited and you see the opportunity and we all know how amazing Plexus is. You want people to join your team and do this with you. But from the outside looking in, that doesn't tell them anything. It looks like you're just trying to, to make your own money and build your own kind of um, a team. And it doesn't, they don't know what they're joining. So Suzanne said, if you would not say it to them face to face, don't post it on Facebook. So that was kind of a good little tip. Um, you know, she, she used the example that if she was meeting somebody, she wouldn't say to them face to face, Oh my goodness, right now, if you sign today, you can join my team and I will give you $17 back on the $34.95. She said she wouldn't say that that way, face to face, so that's not something she would post. Instead, maybe she would post about how she had a team member who was able to pay off her credit card bill this month. That would be something she would share to get kind of indirectly. Um, and then they talked a lot about social media etiquette. Because you know what, you're still gonna have some people out there that either find bad information or they're, they're network marketing haters because they don't understand it. I was one of those, I wouldn't say I was a hater. I would say I was a network marketing snob because I really thought it was a scam or I thought you had to sell a ton of stuff to do any good. Um, but sometimes those people hide behind their keyboard, right? And they make comments on your posts. So social media etiquette, you don't want to get in an argument with those people. You do not want to get in an argument and ever make any sort of comments on a post. Um, and it's completely okay to delete people's posts and comments if they are not portraying what we know is true about Plexus, because other people will see those. So delete them, and then if you feel called or if you feel pulled, you can follow up, obviously, in a private message and give that person um, uh, the correct information, but don't feel like you have to, um, you know, keep those on your, on your page. The other thing they talked about, and I just love this. In fact, I think we're going to do, um, I've asked Sarah Taylor and Nikki and a couple of other uplines to do a call just on blocking objections and building your confidence. This is a big one because it is scary when somebody tells you no it is scary in the beginning when somebody tells you they found on the internet that ours contains a product and it's banned in Australia. Or they tell you it causes false drug tests or all these other myths that are out there. When you first hear that for the first time and you don't know how to react, it's scary. And you can maybe um, not, not come back with the right information for them. So Plexus, they talked a lot about this shield of confidence. And if you keep this shield of confidence in mind, and this is what you focus on, um, then blocking objections is gonna be much easier for you. So the shield is, has five parts. The heart of the shield is your story, your personal plexus story, plus two more stories of people you know. Because right, nobody can argue with you on your truth. If plexus helped you get off your thyroid medication, nobody can argue that. If it helped your dad um, reduce his insulin, nobody can argue with that. Or if you've lost weight or inches or you're not taking Advil every day or you're, just, you're not drinking three Diet Cokes, um, nobody can argue with you on that. And then you wanna talk about and focus on, we have a 60 day money back guarantee for our customers. That's huge. Over 40% of our orders come from customers. 
and our return rate on that 60 day money back guarantee is less than 1%. For a debt free company, if we, um, if our products did not work, not only would we not be debt free, we'd be broke. Um, we'd be given way, giving everybody their money back. Plexus also, um, they post and they update the scientific evidence behind all of their ingredients all of the time. You can find those in the back office and the knowledge center and on the learning center. And so that's something else that you can stand behind is that we have proven ingredients that are plant-based and are the most natural on the market. You can be confident in that and know that that is true. The other thing you can be confident in is beyond those three stories of yours and two people you know, the thousands of other online testimonies from real people. I know there are a lot of them out there. And for our team, we have the Plexus Wellness by the Pink Rock Stars. That is kind of our testimony page. When I started building that, I only put testimonies in there of people I know. So you can be confident if you pull any of those testimonies and you need to know exactly what that person did or what medications they were on or what their doctor said, we can reach out to that person and find out. And for most testimonies in Plexus, um, we can find out because, you know, we are one Plexus, our sidelines and other teams are always so helpful, we can almost always find out who that person is. In fact, Polly on our team messaged me, um, it may have been around Super Saturday, and there was a post floating around there about somebody who had quit smoking on Plexus. And it was just the person's name and, um, and their testimony, but we didn't know who this person was. Nobody was tagged in it. Well, we were able, we were, I was able to help her track that person down and put her in touch with that person so she can find out exactly how they quit smoking. The other thing on the chart is the phenomenal growth of the company. This would not happen if our products did not work. It would not happen if our compensation plan was not legit and was not a sound compensation plan. Uh, we are set this year to be a billion dollar company. It took Avon 84 years to hit a billion dollars and we're about ready to do it in under 10, which is just phenomenal. Um, there's lots of other statistics that we've shared before on the team page about this. We were ranked um, year before last as number eight of the fastest growing private companies in the world, and that's by Inc. 500, and that's of all private companies, not just direct sales. Um, so it's a great, great um, shield of confidence, and I really love this. They also talked a lot about, you know what, if you bring up the objection first and control the conversation, then um, you're coming from a place of strength. And you're not starting the conversation off maybe on kind of a negative foot. Because if anyone is like me, the very first thing I did when I heard about Plexus for the very first time, I Googled it. That's what you do. What comes up when you Google Plexus? That crazy Betty rips the pink drink apart. Um, because it comes up first, I knew she paid for it to come up on the Google search, so I was kind of leery. But a lot of people see that. There's a lot of bad information on there. And so if you think somebody is a little leery or maybe you're not sure, bring up the objection first and say, look, I know you may have Googled it and there's a lot of bad information out there. I just, you know, I would love for you to let me give you the facts and share with you why our products are changing so many people's lives. And so, you know, present Plexus from a place of strength. Always turn the conversation back to the company and the products and what they, what, they, what they do. And realize too, a lot of people, when they bring me this information, they're not trying to be negative. They're not trying to like, you know, put you down or slam plexus. They're just looking for information. And it turns out the only information they currently have is incorrect. So it's up to us to educate them. The other thing I talked about is you should not uh, sell samples and I like this I have certainly had people buy samples from me we talk all of the time about how you know the samples are really just for taste because for major health changes you got to be on it for longer than three or seven days but one thing BB said she really owned it and I loved it she's like you know what don't buy the seven day sample buy the 60 day sample um, and with the guarantee you know it really is a no-brainer and so I loved how she just put that spin on it that she said it is the um, 
the 60 day sample. One, the other thing they talked about, you'll see this E, 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 E equals money. So that came from Victor Antonio, but it goes with helping your, it goes back to the customer care, right? So the first E is you want to empathize with your potentials. And he shared the story of what sympathy is versus empathy. Uh, if you're on the boat with somebody and you're on a ship and that person gets seasick, if you look at them and think, oh man, I bet that person feels bad, that's sympathy. If you go over to that person and rub them on their back and then you throw up with them, that's empathy. And so he said, you want to empathize with your customers. You want to throw up with them. You know, we can relate to them so well because we have all had plexus change our lives. So just be empathetic to whatever their health issue is. The second E is you want to educate them, but you want to go beyond giving them information, right? They can get information from your website. They can get information from the product label. You want to give them insight. So that's information that goes beyond the obvious. And that's where you can share with them maybe some personal testimonies. Or if you have a couple of tidbits of knowledge about each product, like they may not know our probiotics, the only one on the market that has an antifungal to actually kill off the bad stuff. Um, they may not know some of those little tidbits. So give them insight. And then the third one is empower them to make a decision. We're not pressuring people. We want to empower them to make their own decision. You know, you don't want to pressure anybody into Plexus. We want them to try it because they're ready to try it and they're ready to make a change. So if you empower them to make a decision or invite them to be a part of the journey with you, you know, that's much better than pressuring them. And it also helps you in your mindset. If you keep in your mind, we're sharing it, we're sharing information and we're empowering people, that's a lot less scary than selling something. Victor Antonio, there's two videos. He did two videos just for Plexus for Super Saturday. I've posted both of them on the team page. Um, they probably have gotten buried. You can use the team page by searching. So in the toolbar, just search Victor Antonio and his two videos will come up. He talked about a couple things though that I want to touch on really quickly tonight. Sorry. He talked about how sharing and not selling is what you want to do but it's 80% your mindset and only 20% tool set. We all have the exact same awesome website, the exact same amazing products, and we have all these resources and trainings. We all have the 20% tool set. What makes those successful and those not is that 80% mindset. And so that goes back to the beginning of deciding to be successful and determining exactly what you're willing to do to be successful. I loved it too. He talked about the new ambassador phases and this is so, so true. So you'll see here on these phases in the very beginning, you are unconsciously incompetent. And I love that because you're not thinking about it and you don't know about it, right? Then all of a sudden you've decided you're going to work the business and you are consciously incompetent. You know, you don't know anything and that's scary. And that is why in the beginning, it's so important to use your upline. Use us for everything. Let us, you are not bothering us, I promise you. Um, pull us into three-way calls, three-way chats, messages. Send me screenshots of questions from people and let me show you how I would answer them. That's how I learned. Um, if I didn't send Sarah Taylor 100 questions a day, then something was wrong in the beginning. Then all of a sudden, though, you move into this phase where you're consciously competent. You are consciously thinking about Plexus, you're learning, and you're competent, and you know it. That's great. I think that's, you know, where a lot of us are. But where you want to move to, he said, is where you're unconsciously competent. Where you are so competent and confident in Plexus, you don't even have to think about it anymore. You don't even have to refer to your notes to know about the pro bio. You don't even have to think about it. Um, it just comes naturally. And so that's just going to come with time. Uh, you know, he said this because we don't want people to think you have to know it all before you start working your business. You are never going to know it all, right? You're never going to be able to answer every question right, right off the bat. So you might as well jump in with both, both feet and start earning money while you're learning and while you're learning about the products and the company. 
he has this chart here. I'm going to, let's see, move this out of the way. He talked a lot about where consumers are, and it's this bar graph of this 20, 60, 20. <clears throat> The 20% on the left, so in my old job, we called these red lights, green lights, and yellow lights. The 20% on the left, the people that are convinced they know everything already, they are never going to buy Plexus, so you might as well just walk away. Don't even waste your time. So if you have somebody who tells you um, that, no, our products aren't the best out there, or their stuff is better, or they just want to argue with you, just walk away. Bless and release. We used to call these people the red lighters. You're never going to change their mind. And the moment you realize that and you can kind of release it and not let them bring you down, then the better off you're going to be. You want to focus then on this. You've got this 20% on the right. Those are the people who are concerned about the change. They are already ready to make a change. They are your green lighters. They are probably the ones that have already jumped on board and are already trying it with you, right? These are the easy ones. What you want to do, you want to take that 60% in the middle who are complacent with where they currently are, and you got to move them over to the right in that concern category. And Vincent um, said that what you have to do for them, you have to make the pain of the same greater than the pain of the change, right? Think about that. Make the pain of the same greater than the pain of the change. He told a story about an old hound dog on a porch. I'm not going to go into many details, but basically there's a dog on the porch who's howling and in pain because he's laying on a tack, but he won't get up. Why won't he get up? Because it's not bad enough for him to actually put forth the effort to get up and move. So, you know, you have to help people, he said, to see and to realize that if they stay complacent in that 60%, how is the pain of the same going to be greater than the pain of the change? Are they going to continually be on those medications? I know my husband was on gout medication, and the pain of staying on that medication and the side effects was far greater than taking the chance on trying Plexus. And so that was just something he said to think about to move those people over. Um, the other thing I like, the last thing about um, – Super Saturday, is that Plexus, when you're talking about network marketing and the opportunity, what makes Plexus different? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here in just a second. Plexus set out to be different. Plexus set out to do network marketing the way it could be done and the way it should be done, but the way it often rarely is. And so I think that's a good kind of phrase to keep in mind. Um, so that's really kind of the um, summary of Super Saturday. Let me check the chat. Do you guys have any questions? It's almost um, been an hour. That was helpful. Okay. One thing I did write down, I actually didn't put it in the presentation, but since I have it written down here, um, Suzanne Clinton is a diamond. She's been a diamond for, for two years now. And it took her a while to get there. Um, she tells a great story. I'd encourage all of you guys to go on YouTube and watch some diamond documentaries and because it really is a good way to see how these people became diamonds. It's everyday people. It talks about their struggles and how they did it. And it's very inspiring to me. But Suzanne Clinton, okay, she has 33 active level ones on her team. That means 33 people below her that are using the products. 15 of those are wholesale ambassadors. So the other 18 are working the business. Of those 18, so that's all she has on her first level working the business are 18 people. Seven of them are jewels, four of them are diamonds. Within her first four levels of those 18 people, she has 14 diamonds. And so that only comes, right, it's just a numbers game. You never know who those 18 people are that are going to be your rock stars on your team. That's why wholesale ambassadors are kind of the backbone to the business. I started as a wholesale ambassador. Um, but you just want to keep reaching out to people um, and sharing these products because from a business perspective, you never know whose life it's going to change 
and who's going to decide the work of business. So I just thought those numbers were a good illustration um, to think that you really, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot um, to be successful in the business. So, oh, I just say, oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, I'll post it on the team page. And again, you can find those other videos from Super Saturday on there, too.